JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JVD Traders Espresso with me, Dr. Zulman Charles, because today's the 9th of March, 2022. So welcome everyone, welcome to this um, Wednesday's morning session where we're gonna have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product as always i'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue Okay, so now then, um, yeah, uh, as always, before we jump in into the charts, um, so a, a quick mentioning of our um, JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course, our JFD Bank website, and specifically our JFD research page, which is also updated on a daily basis, so you have to check us out here on jfdbank.com, and click on the research tab right there on the top. So, now then guys, uh, jumping into the charts, um, yep, I'll pick up on the stock heat map in a bit, um, now, uh, Nikkei 225, so just a quick update. So yeah, we stayed below that uh, 25,425 zone and we continued today to drift further south. Not significant, not too much of a drift here, but still we closed in negative territory. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, for now, uh, looking at all this and uh, probably what I would like to do here is to remove all the lines and uh, mm, just kind of have a bit of a fresh look at everything. So first of all, one level, the only, the only there's one level that I want to bring back is this one, the one that I talked about previously, this um, uh, 23,725 zone. I'm currently aiming for that area. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, for now, it's not looking good in general. Um, you can see that also we have a, like a bunch of uh, downside resistance lines here could it could play out however all of them are a little bit on the tentative side so so yeah um I would say be very careful, uh, be very cautious here right now. And uh, yep, I would say if you're looking for some upside, well, it's a bit of a tricky moment right now with the upside. Um, if you're, um, unless unless the index somehow reverses sharply to the upside and at least, at least overcomes the 21 day EMA. However, even if it does so, well, I mean, we would, um, we would prefer maybe kind of maybe to wait for a break of this downside line, short term tentative downside resistance line taken from the high of the 5th of January. Um, because what I don't want to see here is something like this happening where like, for, for example, on the 10th of February here, uh, we had a bit of a, mm, a push above this 21 day EMA, but then it kind of quickly reversed back down. So, you know, some sort of like better confirmation is still needed. Uh, Shanghai Composite, guys, boom, there we go. So um, yesterday um, and the day before on Monday, I said that um, I need to see a drop below this key support zone. And I would like to see a close below that area as well in order to go for lower levels. Well, <laughs> excuse me, um, this is what happened. We got that close and look at this. I mean, what a sell off here today. Um, we have managed to travel all the way um, almost actually uh, let me just grab a line um, so basically this is the target for now the, the lowest point of September of 2020 um, we managed to clear that level uh, we managed to break below that area um, the slide continued um, and I think let me just find try to find so this is where it found support near the high of the third <clears throat> excuse me, the 3rd of July of 2020. And uh, that level is roughly around that 3,152 mark. Now,
Sorry, apologies for for going a little bit quiet there. Um, had to clear up my throat. Sorry, um, but yeah, basically um, we had a nice kind of a hold up near this three thousand one hundred fifty zone from which we rebounded and uh, yep this is um, most another interesting thing is that we have jumped back above this uh, 3200 level and we kind of stayed uh, <clears throat> we closed above uh, or sorry we haven't closed yet but we're still staying above it now um, because I'm running this video a little bit earlier not my usual um, you know not my usual time here so um, at the moment the index is still open we're still trading here um, but um, yeah um, for now for now I mean if this area I would say like this if this 3200 uh, 3200 zone somehow continues to hold Maybe a bit of a retracement here like this could be possible. Um, again, I'm not rushing into anything yet. I am keeping an eye on this area. If we drop below that 3200 zone, then yes, again, I'll, I'll aim for that 3150 territory. But if that doesn't stop uh, the slide, then, well, I mean, the next target for me is the highest point of March of 2020 near the 3074 level. Of course, everybody's on, on the lookout for that um, psychological 3000 mark, but let's not rush into anything yet. So, guys, let's go slowly on this one. And like I said, for now, as I mentioned before, I'm keeping an eye on this that 3200 zone uh the german index dax uh yeah so yesterday uh kind of remained flat and uh um it did um initially move lower then higher but then back down so yeah i mean uh, sorry initially it went higher but then back down um so yeah it kind of uh it is a bit of a, a tricky one right now so um if um if the, what i mentioned to you yesterday that for now i'm kind of um aiming for that 50 percent retracement on the fibonacci here um we are very close to that level to that area and that is roughly around that um uh, 12 000 300 12,000 uh, let me just kind of zoom in here a little bit yes uh, 12,313 something like that um, so or in general I could say the 12,300 zone so that's um, that's roughly the area around that 50% uh, retracement on the Fibonacci because as you can see, I'm monitoring this one. I'm measuring this one from the, the that massive drop that we saw in in March, in the beginning of March of 2020, and up up until the you know the peaks that we managed to reach here uh, in the uh, beginning of January. So yeah, um, so quite a decent move here, I would say. So now we're kind of correcting nicely to the downside, but everything's kind of, like I said, in line with technical analysis. Um, it's a nice corrective move here, 50%. So that's okay-ish. Um, I mean, 50% on the Fibonacci, but um, uh, uh, in general, let's say if we measure it from the top here, the loss is roughly around that 25, 24, 25% here, if we take it all the way to that 50% retracement on the Fibonacci. Um, so, <clears throat> So yeah, guys. Um, for now, um, looking at this here, I would say be very careful, be very cautious, as always. Um, and uh, for now, I'm I'm still aiming for that. Uh, like I said, for that hurdle, that twelve thousand three hundred zone. Um, the cash index right now is. Covering somewhat is currently trading at around 13,150 zone. So uh, basically, we have a nice good jump here back up. Um, however, don't get me wrong, I mean, this could be seen as a temporary correction before another possible leg of buying. Um, now, if, um, like I said, if it travels a little bit higher, but let's say finds resistance uh, somewhere near that uh, 13,300 territory, so let me just put it here. Um, this is what, like I said, we are already above that uh, psychological 13,000 mark. Okay, so that's all fine. Um, we may travel a little bit higher, um, but um, this is what I'm keeping an eye on. I'm keeping an eye on that 38.2% retracement on the Fibonacci, which is, and I do apologize maybe for the, um, actually, let me, uh, for the amount of colors here, but let me just get rid of this, probably it'll be easier. So, 
I'm kind of uh, if we are back above the 13,000 mark okay that's fine doesn't mean that you know we're getting very positive from here no um, what I'm gonna aim here for now is this uh, like I said th this 13,300 zone the 310 zone uh, which is marked by the lowest uh, the low of January I think it's not the lowest point yeah that is the lowest point of January of 2021 um, around here like I said we do have also that 38.2 percent retracement on the Fibonacci which also could you know provide a bit of a hold up a bit of resistance and if it does that then this is where my arrow would come in nicely uh, this curved arrow would uh, would show a good traje trajectory trajectory um, and uh, yeah um, we could then maybe you know get another decline here so I mean at the moment it's quite interesting we are getting that nice correction um, correction to the upside um, of course we could start drawing some like um, uh, some downside lines here which in a way could come in yes uh, looking at this I mean we have this steep downside resistance line and uh, if it holds somewhere around here then it, everything kind of would line up perfectly here and uh, we could see maybe another decline like this so um, looking at this picture yes as I said uh, for now um, uh, um, I'm keeping an eye on this area if it holds another slide could be possible for me to let's say get excited a little bit with the upside maybe a push above the 13,665 territory somewhere around here would be needed that's the uh, the lowest point I think if I'm not mistaken let me just double check very quickly no uh, that's the low of the 23rd of February 2021 and then yeah and also near it's marked near the low of the 3rd of March 2022 so yeah keep that in mind uh, euro stocks 50 something that I don't look at very often but sometimes occasionally I do like to have a look at those um, so yeah um, beautiful decline in general let me get rid of all the drawings here and uh, yeah start fresh so uh, we found some support uh, around here so let me just kind of have a look here so yeah we found some support near the 3387 zone uh just let's say we kind of fell shy you know from uh, reaching some of uh some other levels well, i mean for example not uh where's that where's that where's that level there we go this one right here so the 3305 zone that's the um, the highest point of october of 2020 so we kind of uh you know we still have some path towards that um, but um, we got a nice hold up near the lowest point of December of 2020 um, and uh, yeah uh, let's see if this area can continue to provide support for now um, we might see maybe also a bit of a retracement here to the upside so let's keep an eye on that and uh, um, certainly, um, of course, we can also draw a, a steep downside resistance line, which could, you know, uh, kind of play out here nicely as well. But if you're looking for some upside, now this is where the tricky bit comes in. I would like to see a break of this uh, downside line first, and then I would slowly start aiming higher. However, with the problem with the upside here, that we would also have some other, um, you know, downside lines here, which could uh, act as good resistance areas. So, um, so yeah, let's not rush into anything. Yes, for now we're seeing a bit of a maybe a retracement, um, but that's all fine. That's all normal and healthy. Um, however, this retracement might be you know uh, a small correction before another possible leg of selling uh, Dow Jones industrial average guys so uh, yeah uh, yesterday the the you know the US equities did slide a little bit as well um, <clears throat> um, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me um, they did closed fractionally in the red uh, not sorry I wouldn't say fractionally but actually it just still closed in the red there was an attempt to you know push higher but for example here you can see on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you can see that yes, um, it, it, there was an attempt to climb back above this 33,150 zone, but it failed to stay above it, and well, that's what we got. We got another decline. Uh, we are seeing also a slight little corrective move higher right now, so everything's kind of still you know normal in line. Uh, but um, as I mentioned before, I'm keeping an eye on this uh, this barrier right here. Excuse me, this barrier, the 23.6. Uh, percent retracement of the Fibonacci as you can see it's currently acting as somewhat of a floor 
a good floor um, and uh, yep um, if we if eventually that floor gets broken then guys I mean this could lead to some further declines of course we'll be aiming for that psychological 32,000 mark but if that gets cleared well guess what I mean further declines are possible here and then in that scenario I am aiming for that 38.2 percent retracement on the Fibonacci which is uh, slightly below that psychological 30,000 mark uh, DXY dollar index so <clears throat> Um, getting a bit of a retracement so it seems like the markets um, are trying to maybe like you know um, get a bit of a you know a bit of a bit of find some ground I would say maybe like that um, you know and kind of stabilize however again at the moment all this just looks like you know temporary corrections before uh, the next kind of you know directional move in the, or the in in <clears throat> in the direction in the direction of the prevailing trend so <clears throat> So basically, um, at the moment, looking at this, I mean, um, I want to see how this is going to shape up. I mean, I, I, I'm wondering if this is going to end up being maybe somewhat of a bullish flag or a bullish pennant, you know, so something like that. Um, and if so, then yes, as I said before, um, I'm aiming for that psychological 100 level, guys. We're not far from there. And uh, to be honest, and even to be honest, I mean, I can, I think that might the 100 level could be just a temporary pit stop before you know a further move north um that said um confirmation breaks are still needed and for example from the shorter term perspective if you're you know if you're looking for something a little bit more reassuring keep your eyes on this um, the recent highest point uh, or the recent high or the recent uh, the current highest point of, of march near the 99.42 zone right there guys so yeah let's see how that's going to play out uh jumping into gold um gold is on fire guys and if you remember on monday and on yesterday i talked about gold and i said that if we clear the 2015 level my next target is that uh, 2075 zone which is and let me show you what it is it is the all-time high here uh, which was reached in August of 2020 so we managed to climb to that level we managed to approach that area and uh, can we can we go further I mean this is quite insane guys I mean at the moment um, yeah everything's looking quite positive here for gold and to be honest gold might continue drifting higher here so be very careful for those shorts if you are shorting then well I, I hope you know what you're doing and I hope you have your stop losses in place because if uh, I mean this can change very quickly and I mean it can really take you out very quickly so uh, be very careful be very cautious have your stop losses in place and uh, yeah um, everything will be fine then so but in other words coming back to my analysis that I've kind of picked up you know what I've uh, mentioned in the beginning of, uh, of the, this week I said that uh, well be very careful first of all if we pop you know above this uh, 1974 territory then we'll go I, uh, I will aim for some higher levels uh, we've cleared that we've managed managed to reach that 2000 mark um, and look how rapidly we are advancing and uh, we managed to then yesterday I said about I talked about this 2015 zone I said that I'm aiming for that level initially uh, we could just kind of you know it was just a, a stepping stone here on the way um, and uh, yep look at this I mean we managed to travel all the way to that uh, almost to that uh, 2075 zone so I'm keeping an eye on it now what I would like to see here is uh, probably we could test that area mm, however can we go higher well this is going to be a tricky one because again let's uh, let's see how all this is going to play out for now i'm aiming for this 2075 level again um, and then i want to see what's going to happen after if we do break it and stay above it uh, then yes i will go for those higher levels uh, you know that 2100 level is crying there so it's waiting for you know crying for attention um, and uh, yeah uh, and you know further advances as well could be possible so however let's go slowly on this step by step at the moment like I said I'm aiming for that 2075 territory um, but um, again if suddenly let's say if it starts dropping for example today what you can do here is if it suddenly starts dropping below the current lowest point of today near the uh, 2035 zone then maybe a bit of a retracement could be possible but not a huge one uh, WTI oil very quickly on this one so uh, yeah uh, it continues to rally I mean not much, you know, much, nothing new, 
now on I mean it's just now the question is how much how further because again now as I mentioned before for the for oil we need to jump into a monthly chart and as I mentioned to you already like I was mentioning this from Monday on Monday and Tuesday and probably I'll continue mentioning this throughout every video uh, just in case that somebody maybe who you know has not seen my previous videos um, could know what I'm talking about so kind of what I'm saying here is that um, from the technical side I mean uh, looking at this picture if by any chance the um, the commodity let's say by the end of the month drifts back below this 115 territory then yes we could be due for a nice correction to the downside however if we continue to trade above this 115 zone which is the highest point of May of 2011 then uh, or in other words I think it's the yeah that's the highest point of uh, 2011 in general um, if we do stay above it then to be honest we might see a, a bit of a correction later on um, but it it could be something something like this basically where you know you could see a drift lower test the too high the high of 2015 uh, sorry 2011 and then rebound and push back to the upside the highest point here that I have in my chart is the high 147 zone roughly around there uh, which was reached in 2008 and after that you can see what happened we had a bit of a, a bit of a crisis um, if we can pr if I can say it this way so look at it this way guys I mean it is rallying right now inflation is just skyrocketing but uh, don't forget that uh, apart from all the geopolitical tensions that are happening right now in the world uh, unfortunately unfortunately um, still we should not forget about the uh, the central banks uh, because initially kind of you know the whole kind of topic in the beginning of this year was that you know central banks will be uh, raising interest rates and well um, that could you know have its negative effect on the uh, on the indices and well the, uh, the negative effect kind of came in a little bit earlier um, however um, like I said we'll keep an eye on the central banks and of course especially the Fed uh, this this month and uh, yeah for now I mean if you know suddenly let's say by later on this year if the uh, this um, this acceleration eventually will have to you know reverse because I mean we had the same story here in 2007 here at the end of 2007 then the beginning of 2008 but then it quickly kind of you know uh, when the crisis kind of uh, deepened and uh, uh, oil uh, the consumption kind of fell consumption fell and well and, and, and of course oil uh, did drop as well so if we are on the same path right now then we if we are repeating history then guys well you'll be the judge you know what could happen i uh, don't want to be the uh, bearer of the bad news or any news so yeah but like in terms of oil um i believe that yes there is some more room for you know for the upside uh, 300 as the, it's there's some speculation uh, in the intern on the internet i wouldn't say that you know that's um, i would i wouldn't say not yet uh we're not yet uh there in in in, in our society i think where the where oil you know could go to 300 so um that's a bit i think that 150 that's something we you know where to watch out for uh what to watch out for maybe a little bit above that um but um one thing for sure is to if you are aiming for those round numbers don't get me wrong oil sometimes doesn't really uh, you know go for those round numbers like for example here the hundred everybody was aiming for 150 I mean on the on WTI oil I'm talking about I mean Brent is a little uh, Brent is a little bit different here so um, this is where I'm saying so it, you know don't always aim for that beautiful round number uh, it could be a good target but if you can see that it's you know stalling somewhere near that uh, just kind of you know you can uh, you can bail on that and you can close it and uh, just enjoy you know some of the profits so anyway 
coming back to this, like I said, I think my point is uh, clear here. So for now, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the monthly chart and I'm keeping an eye on this 115 zone. Uh, Ripple very quickly on that one before I run out of time. Um, so Ripple very quickly. So yeah, um, it's a beautiful, beautiful reversal today. Um, not saying, I mean, this is, I'm not saying that this is, you know, the most spectacular one. However, the reason I'm saying it's beautiful because um, basically, mm, let's see, if this is going to work out, um, if we can get a break of this downside line. Currently, we're testing that 21-day EMA, shown as the yellow line here. Let's see if we can break this downside line. And another thing here, of course, is uh, the um, the potential idea of a uh, symmetrical triangle where we're getting a bit of a squeeze. So we're currently near the upper side of that triangle. So in other words, let's see if we can break out here. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, again, I'm not saying that this is, you know, what's going to happen. It's just that uh, there is a good possibility because we're coming close to the upper side of the triangle again. Um, however, until we get that break, we cannot really get very comfortable with that idea. Okay, guys, jumping into a few pairs very quickly, um, AUD and ZD, just a quick mentioning I'm not going to spend too much time on it yesterday I said that um, if we stay below that 1.0666 territory right here then yes further declines could be possible however we did not get that uh, you know we did we didn't stay below it we um, just had a false breakout and as you can see we're having a rebound right now so <clears throat> what my concern here is right now is a possible range and you can see that yourselves clearly so if we get a nice, um, if we get a nice here uh, rebound, maybe uh, we could push back towards the upper side of this range. However, for that, if you're, if you, if you want to see something like that, or you would like to see something like that, then at least wait for a push back above the 21 day EMA and maybe a push above this 1.0733 territory somewhere around here. And then, yeah, we could go for some higher levels for now, given that we're closer to the lower side of this range, I will uh, remain cautiously cautiously bearish uh, NZD USD so I talked about this one yesterday as well just also a quick update we failed to break this down this uh, this barrier I'm still watching this and to be honest all this area right here for me right now above this upside line but below this barrier is somewhat of a neutral one so I'm keeping an eye on this and uh, in order for me to go for some higher levels I need to see a clear break above this uh, above this 200 day EMA as well and then yes uh, more uh, buyers could join in potentially um, if uh, we break this down, uh, this upside line here, sorry, uh, then I will can start considering maybe a move to the downside. Uh, USD CAD very quickly on that one. So uh, USD CAD um, finally finally broke out here. So we managed to break this this barrier here, the upper side of the range. Or it wasn't really like a beautiful range here, but still, you know, we uh, it was a key important barrier to watch here. So now uh, we managed to reach one of my targets, the 1.2896. Um, you can see that we got a hold up here. And now what I'm targeting here is I'm going to be aiming for this hurdle, the highest point of December of 2021. Um, and uh, yep. Yep. Um, <clears throat> Uh, yep, uh, for now, this 1.2964 zone marked by the highest point of December uh, could be the next good target if we clear this uh, 1.2896 level right there. Um, US dollar against the Turkish Lira, guys. I mean, I haven't picked up on this one for quite a while, but if you remember, uh, a while ago I said that I'm watching this, these two levels. And when I was covering Euro, uh, the Euro TRY or US dollar TRY, um, I said that I'm keeping an eye on this barrier. When they, we, we got that pop out here, as you can see, we then drifted back down. We stayed kind of around that hurdle and now we're pushing above it again. So basically everything's working out nicely. We can get rid of this uh, line here uh, that kind of I would say mission accomplished we got that you know good move outside of it and now what I'm keeping an eye on of course is this highest point of February uh, which we are currently very close to um, this is uh, this area is roughly around that 14.65 zone if we clear that then yes I'll go for some higher levels my next target then Mm, this is where I need to grab a line. My next target is this inside swing low of the 17th of December of 2021. Um, that area is roughly around that 15.62, uh, 63 zone, somewhere roughly around there. So I would say that, um, yeah, if um, if we do 
break and stay above this area, then my next target is the uh, the inside swing low of the uh, 15.6263 zone right there. Now then, um, jumping into GBPUSD, also a quick update. Um, we, we saw a bit of a retracement here. I mean, we're seeing some retracement today as well. However, we're still below this uh, hurdle there. Yeah, this 1.3161, I mentioned this before. So basically for now, um, in a way we could see a, you know, a move a little bit higher here, but um, um, I'm still kind of, you know, keeping something like this in mind. So let's see if this is going to hold. If it fails to hold and pushes higher, yes, we could maybe consider a bit of a, you know, a, a retracement to the upside. However, I would need to see maybe a break of this, uh, this downside line right here. And then, yeah, uh, we could maybe go for some higher levels. Um, if you're looking for some levels here, then probably one of the better options to keep an eye on for the upside is something like here. There's 1.3273 zone. And then, yeah, we'll take it from there. Uh, GBPCHF. So, uh, yeah, um, beautiful hold up. Uh, let me just drag this highlighted territory all the way here. This is what I'm keeping an eye on right now. And if this, um, if this holds... If this continues to provide support, then, well, uh, I would say, uh, yes, we might see maybe the this pair jumping around here a little bit. My only issue here is with the upside is the uh, this downside resistance line, the steep downside resistance line, which currently could still, you know, play out nicely. And if it holds, another decline could be possible. If it fails, mm, then maybe, yeah, we could go for some uh, higher levels. But in that scenario, we would need to see maybe f wait for a push above this level, this inside swing low of, of the mm, the 24th of January of 2022. And that's roughly around that 1.2280 zone. And then, yeah, we could go for a larger correction to the, uh, to the upside. Because don't forget that we are still trading below this downside line taken from the high of the 5th of April of 2021. Uh, Euro NZD, so yeah, beautiful uh, drop initially below this hurdle, this key support zone, which was the lowest, which is the lowest point of November. Uh, we have moved uh, nicely uh, to the upside right now we nice had a nice corrective move higher however we're currently getting a hold up here and uh in a way guys if this continues to hold then certainly a bit of a um a bit of a retracement like that again or sorry i wouldn't say a retracement sorry another decline could be possible and then we could you know see this Mm, we could see this uh, this pair moving nicely back to this 1.56, 42, 43 level or even below that. However, don't get me wrong, uh, some of you are probably understanding that, you know, this has been quite a decent move lower. Um, we are currently, you know, re we have currently uh, retraced this 23.6% uh, on the Fibonacci. Um, and it kind of everything is kind of working out perfectly. So that's what I'm saying. If it holds, another slide could be possible. If it breaks, we could aim for that 38.2% retracement on the Fibonacci, which is roughly around that 1.6323 level. And finally, Euro USD, guys. So um, yeah, beautiful retracement. Again, let's have a bit of a, a uh, see what's what's happening here. So we managed to reach this hurdle. Okay, so this 1.0870. I talked about that in the beginning of this week. Uh, we found a bit of support here I would say so it's neither of these levels so basically I would say this is a kind of a brand new level that has been established here so um, yeah the 1.0806 zone um, yes we found support here if you're looking for some upside guys well again it's not yet there we're not yet we're not there yet uh we need to see a break of this downside line here steep downside resistance line taken from the high of the 10th of february and also maybe a push above the 1.1121 uh, at the same time maybe we could also climb above that 21 day ema so everything could kind of you know line up nicely and uh, more buyers could join in however at the moment any move up up here could still be classed as a temporary correction before another possible leg of selling and uh, certainly the one of the areas that you could keep an eye on is somewhere around here 
this 1.10 zone mm, psychological 1.10 zone yes and if we if that holds another like i said another slide could be possible so guys that's it for this session i really hope you found it useful and thank you very much for watching and listening and thank you very much for joining in and i really appreciate your 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 views your likes your comments guys i really do so um thank you very much for that and i hope you found it useful and i like i said i apologies for not running this one you know as a mm, as a live session but um hopefully next week we can you know i can get back to that and uh for now for now guys have a wonderful trading day stay safe you know be safe both health wise market wise and uh yeah everything will be fine so thank you very much and bye-bye